137 years ago today, May 4th, 1884, a young black woman named Ida B. Wells was thrown off of a train for sitting in a whites-only car, but the railroad company messed with the wrong woman. Wells, who was formerly enslaved, sued the railroad and won, though that decision was later reversed by the Supreme Court. Ida B. Wells went on to be a journalist and own her own newspaper. She led an anti-lynching crusade and advocated for women's suffrage. She was widely published and traveled around the world to lecture and was so out spoken that the FBI opened a file on her, calling Wells a dangerous Negro agitator. Wells died in 1931, but her legacy certainly lives on. And last year, again on May 4th, Ida B. Wells was honored with the Pulitzer Prize special citation for her outstanding and courageous reporting on the horrific and vicious violence against African Americans. Ida B. Wells' great-granddaughter, Michelle Duster, has just published a biography of her famous relative called Ida B. the Queen, The Extraordinary Life and legacy of Ida B. Wells. Michelle, thank you so much for joining us. Oh, thank you so much for having me. So what was it like growing up with such an important family legacy? Was it something that you talked about often or thought about a lot growing up? Well, I certainly knew that Ida B. Wells was my great-grandmother. She was my grandmother's mother. And I knew that um, Ida was famous, um, and she was a journalist, and she was a suffragist. Um, and so I knew all of that, but I didn't recognize the magnitude of what she actually achieved until I was around the same age that she was when she um, was involved in so many of these monumental activities. And we know that she was enslaved at birth. Tell us a little bit more about her early life. Right. Well, she was born during the Civil War in 1862 in Holly Springs, Mississippi. And she luckily uh, had parents who were very progressive, and they took advantage of the right to become educated. Her father was very politically involved. And so Ida, by example, um, learned that she had the right to the American dream, just like everybody else. And your book is, is a beautiful mix of Ida B. Wells' history, stunning illustrations, and your own story as well. You said that your goal was to humanize your great-grandmother. How so? Right. I wanted people to understand that although my great-grandmother achieved all of these amazing things in her life, she also had down times. She had times when she doubted herself, when she felt discouraged, when she had money troubles, and she overcame them. And I think when people see somebody overcoming obstacles, that makes them more relatable. And you've done so much research on your great-grandmother. Why do you think she was so fearless? Uh, a black woman, a double minority, raised in the Deep South just after the Civil War, as you said, yet she had no hesitation standing up for herself and others at such an early age. Right. I think that her parents had a huge influence on her um, to believe that she deserved uh, what this country had to offer, um, first-class citizens. And she was also, I think, driven for uh, personal reasons. I mean, she lost her friends to violence, and she decided she was going to um, make sure that this country and the world knew what was really happening in this country. And much of the book is, of course, about your great-grandmother, but you also highlight other black activists from Frederick Douglass, W.E.B. Du Bois, and Shirley Chisholm to contemporary figures like Colin Kaepernick and Vice President Kamala Harris alongside with your great-grandmother. What was your goal in doing that? I wanted the younger generation to understand that although my great-grandmother was born over 160 years ago, the work that she's doing or the work that she did has still being continued. Um, and, you know, by current people and current movements. Um, and so we still have this struggle in this country that's lasted for over 400 years. What are some of the lessons of Ida B. Wells' life that, that you wanted to share with your audience, especially young people who are just starting out? I wanted people to see that they, too, can make a difference. They can make their voices heard. Um, they can get involved in organizing and protesting and speak truth to power and somehow, you know, feel like they actually can make a difference. One person can make a difference. Michelle Duster, thank you so much. Again, that book is available wherever books are sold. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.